Hello, this is Irina Shamaila. This is my presentation for Match HR that couldn't happen live, I'm sorry, but here is the content and I hope you'll find it useful. A few things about me. Uh, I've been sourcing and training for a while. My blog, Bullying Streams, is popular. Uh, the group that's more active than on LinkedIn is now on Facebook. I am a partner and sourcer at Brain Gain Recruiting. And uh, our main business these days is training. You can find our courses at the library and some live courses. And I am also into drawing AI images and uh, it's become a pleasant uh, big part of my life. You can check my uh, images here. So let's start with advanced techniques and insights. LinkedIn Recruiter doesn't have good or adequate documentation, and we also know some things that have never been documented. But what sort of I want to talk about how to search on LinkedIn. Uh, it's an iterative process, so you do different things uh, going towards your goals. Approach number one is targeted. You get a job description and you search for everything there. Must-haves, nice-to-haves, quite often you will not find anyone and you start relaxing it. You can be adding ors uh, for similar titles and skills to find more. You will quickly find matching results. However, everybody's searching like that and competition will find them too. And you may not find profiles that have a slightly different wording or something like that. The approach number two is open-ended. This is how I usually approach searching. You do a very minimum. You put in some max hair filters and then you see that uh, profiles pop up that are not matches and you start excluding that wording using the operator not. The advantages is that you will discover members who others don't because you're searching in a very wide open fashion. It, uh, it is more inclusive search and it will get you extra results. And it's very important to understand that it's not like you come in and do the right search and it finds everybody and does not find people who do not match. It's always repeating, uh, looking at the results, repeating again and then collecting. While you're looking at the results, you might learn what to always to exclude or what terms to go together. For example, Java goes with backend. Here are a few examples. Uh, if you search on Google, the OR operator works against you. Google is much better uh, being told uh, some uh, words and it will vary them as needed. LinkedIn is not that way. It needs to be told exactly. So this search provides four different options to look for account executives or sales managers. Another example from my practice I was looking for a pediatric doctor, primary doctors, also varying the words. Another example, searching for human resources business partner, again, variations. And here come knots. Uh, I'm searching in a very uh, open way, and I'm seeing, for example, nurses and assistants while I'm looking for a doctor, I'm starting to exclude those words and get a wider list of results. Another example, I'm searching for staff, adding some keywords, but uh, managers pop up or recruiters, I can be excluding them. The next part is about hidden search operators in LinkedIn Recruiter. They were never documented. At some point, they worked on LinkedIn.com. That's no longer true. Uh, I and uh, uh, a few others have discovered uh, what operators are, and uh, just by trying uh, some variations and what keywords should be. 
So let me show you uh, the list of those operators. They work in LinkedIn Recruiter and LinkedIn uh, and uh, Recruiter Lite. Unfortunately, not in Sales Navigator. So here is the format, and it does not work if you put the stuff in the keywords. It must go either in the job title or company to communicate to a LinkedIn recorder what you're looking for. Here is the full list. Uh, all of these operators currently work, and for some of them, you need to be using some codes. You will also find this list on my blog. So here are examples. Headline, wonderful operator. Uh, there is no official way to search in the headline, and headlines can say open to work, hiring, or put ahead the person's skills, what they're good at, what they want to be doing. Uh, the operator skills. A LinkedIn recruiter has changed its skills search to be almost like keywords. And with the operator skills, you are finding the skills that people have entered themselves. There are more examples. So looking for he uh, searching in the headline. Summary is a great operator. But people often put important stuff in the summary. Skills, spoken languages, degrees, seniority, and all of these operators not only allow you to select some values, uh, search for some values that are not in the official search dialect, they allow you to write a boolean of those operators. For example, here I'm looking uh, at people with a master degree and less experience or bachelor degree and more experience. Or you could be excluding things, like you can exclude managers by the manager code, so, uh, things like that. The next part is, uh, I call it the real-time aggregation solution. Uh, here, I'm starting the search outside of LinkedIn and going to the, added, uh, uh, to the sources where my potential candidates are. Then I collect the data, and then I go to LinkedIn, cross-reference, find the contact information, and then I'm getting in touch with them. Uh, so the data is fresh this way, uh, and combination of sources is better than using one source, and then you have multiple ways to message them. You can invite them, email them, or send them an email. Uh, People aggregator uh, companies like Seekout, for example, they collect data globally and cross-reference. Uh, and here we are creating a mini people aggregator uh, with the freshest data exactly for our own purposes. How do we find non-LinkedIn sources? Uh, you can Google or ChatGPT and find. You can find professional sites. For example, for designers, Behance.net is a great site. Uh, for software engineers, GitHub, and I'll talk about that. Or you can find contact lists in Excel. If it's healthcare license verification site, is your friend because it will have all the names of people with licenses. Or you can search for an ideal candidate and land on pages where there are others like them. Could be another list or a list of uh, members of something. And then on uh, networking sites like LinkedIn or Facebook, you can find networking groups and look at lists of their members. What do you collect? If there are email addresses, it's great because they uniquely identify a, a person. Uh, an outside list may contain a list of uh, LinkedIn URLs. And uh, less unique things is user names and first and last names may be with companies. So they're not uniquely identifying a person. It can help us to land on LinkedIn and, and find exactly them. You keep data from the source. Uh, uh, it may have additional information to what LinkedIn might have. And you all, it also will help you to message them. You, you can tell them. Uh, where the first reference is coming from. 
GitHub profile, group member, license nurse. And then you proceed to LinkedIn. With the information you have collected, you locate these people on LinkedIn. You narrow it to target audience because now you have the information from LinkedIn, such as job titles, uh, uh, companies, and so forth, that can help you narrow it down. You enrich it with contacts, and then you can uh, reach out to those people by multiple channels. So here is uh, an example of combining GitHub and LinkedIn. GitHub is a place where developers hang out and write code together. But uh, people who write code may not be software developers. Some are students, professors, retirees, uh, coding enthusiasts, a manager who uh, loves code so much they're writing it after hours, something like that. GitHub profiles do not have job titles. So we do not know who these people are. We may know that they uh, excel in a specific programming language and live in a certain place, but who, who they are, LinkedIn can tell us. We have developed uh, a new tool, and if you're a technical recruiter, I highly recommend using it. It doesn't even require login at the moment. You go to the tool and search for GitHub profiles and get an Excel table. So this is what our tool looks like. Typical search would be searching for a programming language, searching for a location, and there is also sorting operator. I've decided to sort by the number of followers. You can see that we're getting uh, results with all the fields uh, on the profile, and this uh, tool is very good at finding email addresses. It does all, it does it in all possible ways. Now you have an Excel file with that information that we saw on the previous screen. And you go to a LinkedIn recruiter project, create a new project. It shows you that you can download a sample file that has some fields. But in fact, you can get away with the simplest template. The template should have the, the correct emails and should have first and last names, but they can be just about anything. I put A and B. After you have imported this file, profiles that have been identified by emails are in your project. Uh, profiles that did not find a match by email are not. And uh, it's a loss, but because we are uploading so many, we will get a good chunk of profiles but now with all of their uh, LinkedIn information. Uh, so here, is a, here was a very narrow search. I picked up, uh, as an example, a list of software engineers uh, from Ruby, uh, from, sorry, from GitHub, who use Ruby as their main language, their primary language, and they have not even mentioned Ruby on their profiles. Of course, it's an extreme result, but it shows you that the information is complementary. And now, once you have their, uh, all the ways to contact them, for example, email, you can write to them a specific message that would personalize your outreach. So, a uh, member of the group, Code in Ruby, and here, this one I have invented, the National Test Pilot Association. The next part of the presentation is about LinkedIn's data and how a LinkedIn recruiter, or LinkedIn for that matter, uh, perceives the data and interprets it. We will see that LinkedIn recruiter fails to identify certain data on many, many profiles, and that should be affecting your the ways you search. And it's not what you see is what you get in many ways. For example, here you, you see pretty much identical screens, but they return uh, uh, difficult, uh, different numbers of results for the company app. Why does this happen? The reason why this happens is in one case, Apple was chosen from the uh, drop down of companies. And in this case, it is searched by keyword. And you can see that it provides many more results. 
Uh, this is because LinkedIn, uh, for some profiles for, or for people who work at Apple, LinkedIn does not find them. How do you search for a company by keyword, uh, having uh, as a result many more records show up? One way is to add a space, and then you will see this pencil mark on your uh, entry. This means it's not selected, it is text. And in every case, adding text will be finding you more results. It's, it's, uh, it's a wider search. And here is a, a pretty bizarre uh, res, uh, result in both cases, ExxonMobil and Ford Motor Company. I am including text at ExxonMobil and Ford Motor Company and excluding the selection. And I am finding people who do work at that company but are not find, found by the company selection. If you go to this person profile and press on the company, it will go to the company page, but somehow this association is broken. The same thing with the Ford Motor Company, okay? Uh, the next few slides, I want to show you uh, how LinkedIn does not find specific properties, uh, specific uh, skills, uh, specific companies and so forth that are on the profile. And what that means is that your search should be very relaxed and uh, should use uh, text much more often than selections. Uh, here is uh, companies. Uh, this is a free search for companies and you can do it. Anybody can do it. It turns out that on LinkedIn, <clears throat> companies without sizes are about half of the company. So remember when you search by company size, you will be missing people work at half the companies on LinkedIn. So <clears throat> because we have search operators, uh, it now allows us to write Boolean and we can investigate how many profiles do not have particular values. So here I am searching for no company size and years at company over what. So they must have some current company. Uh, but company size does, uh, <clears throat> is not something is not a field by which you can find them. members without company types. Sixty five percent. Again, I'm using the operators to demonstrate that. Members without seniority, about sixty five percent of members. And in many cases, if you just eyeball the profile, it's pretty clear what seniority is. Yet. LinkedIn would not have assigned uh, any seniority to them. So here I'm searching for senior engineer and excluding all the levels of seniority. So these people will not be found by, for example, seniority senior, but by looking at these profiles, it's pretty clear that they should be senior. People without years of experience, also uh, about 60% of LinkedIn. So remember that when you're searching using all the multiple filters that LinkedIn Recruiter allows. Uh, and uh, the moral here is do not, use, do not overuse them. LinkedIn misses a lot interpreting its data. So avoid selecting values, especially for titles of companies and skills. Use Boolean for better coverage. And avoid selecting LinkedIn calculated filters like company size, type, seniority, and other things for much better coverage. Okay, that concludes my presentation. I'm happy to take any questions from you. Uh, uh, please contact me on LinkedIn or by email. And uh, I hope that uh, this presentation uh, is useful to your sourcing practice. Happy sourcing. <laughs>